Okay. Well, I'm going to start with you. Um, how did you identify this story, and why was it one that, that you wanted to, to make sure it was told? Sure, yeah. Uh, in the fall of 2014, Oh my god, so long ago. <laughs> I know, we were so young then. Um, I ran into the you know, viral poster image of Brooke with her hands on her hips, standing tall and proud in her So Trans So What shirt and her firefighting helmet. And just being a visual person, you know, the image struck me as like, wow, you know, I want to live in her world, I want to live in that future. And then I read her story and realized this incredibly deep, beautiful family story with uh, obviously um, her father being a 9-11 survivor, conservative, Christian, uh, very respected among his brotherhood, um, kind of the old school, and Brooke being the new school, pioneering, bringing diversity to the department, and I really wanted to explore that. Uh, and. Uh, partnering with Animal, the production company based in Pittsburgh. They've supported past work, they supported this film, and really gave me full creative control, along with uh, our producer, Danny Ward, who really mentored me the whole way through, so. Brooke, how, so growing up, being interested in superheroes, how does it now feel to be a hero? In more ways than just firefighter. Um. <laughs> The outfits aren't as cool as I thought they were. <laughs> a lot less with the thigh-high boots. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, I have to say that, uh, honestly, I think th this whole thing, the whole, everything that happened after I decided to come out and embrace who I was, and um, after I basically did the So Trans So What campaign, um, I feel like there's a whole another level that I didn't ever anticipate happening or expect to happen, and it just has been very rewarding for me personally to, um, to meet so many people who are trans or who have trans kids or trans parents um, and people who just, you know, come up to you and and sort of just say, you know, I, I was at the expo one year, the LGBT expo in the city, and um, it, that's where I met Darren and became introduced to the So, so Gay, So What campaign. And, um, I was there a year or two later and a woman came up to me and said, because of you, my kid um, came out to me as trans. And my kid came to me and we bonded over this story. Um, there was a, a, like a, a piece in the Village Voice, just a, a sort of little biopic piece. And, um, and basically she said to me, you know, she said, we read your story together and we used it as a way to open up to each other and understand one another. And, um, and I got to meet their child that day too. And um, so things like that are, you know, you have a definition of what hero is. And, um, and I don't necessarily know that I still see myself as a hero. Um, you know, I still read comic books, so <laughs> I have heroes and I don't know if you're a nerd. So I'm, I'm a nerd, yeah, I'm not really a hero, I'm a nerd. Um, but just like those moments are very rewarding for me personally. And, and Jim, uh, the shirt is great. I won't say that we'll be selling those to the museum store anytime soon. Uh, unless there's demand. Uh, we're always looking for that in revenue in the nonprofit world. I just enjoy working in public. <laughs> my, my question for you, Jim, is uh, how does it feel to be sort of pulled into this, into this celebrity? You know, you fall in love with someone and, and you're in, in this world of celebrity now. That, how is that for you? Um, <clears throat> it's it's kind of surreal at times, but I'm I'm just I'm just a person who's married to Brooke, and uh, I'm nobody special in all this really. Uh, I'm kind of a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty special to me. <laughs> but, uh, I, I know she's doing good things, and I support what she does. So that's all I really can do. Um, so with that, I'm, I'm going to open it up. I enough of my questions. I'd like to open it up to the audience. And I'm going to run around sort of Phil Donahue style. Uh, if anybody knows who that is anymore. Um, uh, with this microphone. Uh, 
Uh, so if anybody, just a uh, show of hands and I'll try to get to as many of you as I possibly can. I'm sure that it doesn't matter to you what other people think, which is a great quality, but I'm curious what your extended family, any siblings, any grandparents and cousins, uh, how did you deal with them? How did they approach you about this? Um, so family is an interesting thing. Um, <laughs> uh, I have been really fortunate in that my immediate family, my mom, my dad, my sister, have been very supportive. Um, I have a younger sister who really didn't make much of the film. Um, she is developmentally disabled, and so she lives in a group home. Um, and it's very, she's, she's kind of amazing in that um, there was this period of time where I was both he and she, and I was both my birth name and Brooke. Um, and now she's, she's very, you know, now it just, Brooke comes very easily to her and she, and, um, and so that's wonderful. And, but as my mother said in the film, it's, you know, it, it was really, the whole process was really a journey. And it wasn't just a journey for me, it was a journey for my family. And so everyone comes at it from very different perspectives. You know, my father is someone who uh, struggled with spirituality for a while as a result of the traumas of his job and has sort of found spirituality renewed in the past couple of years. And so he approaches everything from a very spiritual point of view, from a very, um, you know, this is what God has provided. and whatnot point of view. And my mother, um, my mother has always, I feel like, been the heart of our family. And so I've, she's always been very supportive. And even though she's struggled a lot with coming to terms with things and, um, you know, she, she really struggled with how other people would see me and see her as a parent for me. And so, you know, I remember a conversation that we had when I first started to think about being trans and, and my identity, and I identified as gender non-conforming for a while, just trying to figure out what was comfortable for me. And so there was a period of time where I was very startling. You know, I had facial hair, nail polish, makeup, short spiky hair on my head. You know, I um, you, you know, I would wear women's clothes, but I didn't fill them in the way that you know they're intended to be filled. I guess, and uh, you know, so. My mother definitely had some difficulty with that, and fortunately, we worked through a lot of things. And, and um, you know, I, I feel like I'm a success story in that way that I'm very lucky because there's a lot of LGBTQ people out there who don't have that support, and you know, their families don't go on that journey with them. It's uh, that's sort of the end of the journey for them, not the the beginning of a new one. And so, uh, so, so luckily. My immediate family has been really wonderful. Extended family sometimes is a little bit more difficult. You know, I've, I've been not invited to weddings. I've been, you know, um, well, yeah. I have a cousin who... That might be my fault. <laughs> <laughs> he does really, really like to wear this shirt. <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, I, did, I, I had a cousin who um, did not invite me to a wedding said it was because their fiance's family was very religious and that I might shame them. And so, you know, so there's, it, there's good and bad everywhere. And I just don't talk to my family. <laughs> Other questions? Well, I guess it's just sort of a question and, a, and some comments. There were so many wonderful moments in this movie, um, and I, I, I just so appreciate everybody's involvement. Um, I was particularly struck by the, these incredibly genuine, it seemed, moments, like the, the scenes when you were moving, and then the house went... I apologize. <laughs> 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 and the looks on your face, and the looks on your face, looks on your face, hilarious. And, um, and the scene when your mom came to visit, and I'm just so curious with all of you, how did you... How did you prepare for something like that? Because it seemed like that was the first time that she was meeting, the, the parents were meeting Brooke, and, and how did you get the camera in there? How, how did that go? <laughs> well, Julie is super talented. 
Um, at, like, you know, I, I can't imagine what it's like to be a documentary filmmaker and have to, you know, sort of achieve this fly on the wall sort of status. But Julie, like, and I maybe that's part of it is that Julie is very disarming. Um, we're of similar age and have a lot of, you know, similar sort of ideology about different things. Um, but Julie just, she always made, she always found a way to make me feel like the camera wasn't there and that it was just sort of, you know, we were just girlfriends hanging out, doing our thing, or? For the most part. There were some instances where it was obvious yeah. the camera was there. <laughs> Well, I, uh, they were extremely generous with me, and I would, you know, sometimes go as a one-woman crew, bring in all my luggage on the Amtrak, and, like, Burke would pick me up at Penn Station, bring me back to Port Dervis, and I would crash in their guest room for weeks at a time, and uh, just became, like, an odd kind of family member. <laughs> Julie was the first house guest we had in our new house, you know? She, Julie, like, she really she didn't leave. <laughs> She was there, I think, for like two Just weeks two when minutes. we moved in. It was like two, the first two weeks there, it was, we were like, there's a lot of stuff that's not in the film. There's so much unpacking and like, you know, like there's this little knickknack and where the hell does it go? And like five hours of work, like what the? <laughs> so, but to answer your question, yes, it was the first time my mother had met Brooke. Uh, the other. The, the minute she was married to my stepfather, uh, my father died back in 09. But uh, had we get through it, alcohol, drink. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you still on, like, active in a house, our house? I don't know the terms correctly. And and how how is how is it since this movie's gone out and since all this attention? Like, what's work like for you? Like totally. So um. So I currently serve full time as the LGBTQ outreach coordinator for the FDNY. Uh, so that sort of came about, you know, so I, the first two years of my career, I was in a in firehouse in Brooklyn, which did not go so well um, as I sort of transitioned a little bit. Um, and then I was in headquarters doing recruitment and diversity work, which I found very beneficial and rewarding. And then uh, after about two years of that, I went back to a firehouse in Queens, which is the firehouse you saw. And I was there for about three years, three and a half years. And, um, and then I, uh, as you also saw, I did that annual detail for about a month, a month and a half, where I did the pride stuff for the department. And um, as we were finishing filming, I actually was uh, on a detail and uh, oh, sorry. A detail is like you know, um, like temporary assignment. There we go. <laughs> Regular words. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, so after that sort of temporary assignment for the Pride event, um, they were established. The Office of Community Affairs was establishing um, coordinator positions for diverse communities, and so. I sort of took on the mantle of the LGBTQ outreach coordinator, and I've been doing that since. So, uh, you know, that's uh, that's also something that's been very rewarding and beneficial. Um, to be completely honest, um, I don't know that I'll go back to a firehouse. Um, you know, uh, there have been a lot of different things that I've been through in the fire department, and while being a firefighter is a really great job. And if it were just the act of doing that job, it would be, you know, I would have no problem. I would enjoy doing it. Um, there's a lot of aspects that come along with the job that are not actually firefighting. And those have been somewhat difficult. And, uh, and honestly, I think for a, for, you know, for mental health reasons and for sort of self, um, preservation tactics. I enjoy where I'm at right now, and I think that I have a, a, a position to affect change within the department to hopefully make things better for people who might come after me. So one of the things that I'm really happy to be doing right now is establishing the first ever LGBTQ diversity training for the fire department. Um, and so we're working really hard at that. And um, 
that hopefully should roll out next year. We've been working really hard on that for a while. Um, so things like that where hopefully just educating and opening people up to, um, to the diversity that exists in the world and how to sort of be respectful and appreciate people for what they bring to the table. Um, I think that sort of work I've felt very called to do recently in, in the past, you know, two, three years. And, uh, and I think that's, I'm comfortable there, I'm happy there. I feel like it's an extension of the life-saving work that I got to do as a firefighter where I'm just kind of hopefully saving lives in a different way right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, how many hours, days, and weeks of filming is involved? How many miles of film you shot? About 23 years. It's something about the way you created a narrative around all of this that you know, you're, you're artfully weaving in and out other family members. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's a straight linear story in some sense. I wish you could speak to all of that. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> Mentor and old professor. <laughs> <laughs> years ago and I don't really have a question but I have a present for you it's okay <laughs> Jim will have his merch table set up. <laughs> 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 
Um, so thank you. Please, please join us upstairs though in the lobby uh, for a little after party and some music and some fun. Thanks so much.